for sex That boy broke and I'm next, mama huh? Don't flex, nah, nah, I'm from projects Mama, who boy so let mama Sup? Adele I was always afraid of a lunch lady when I was a kid Right, oh, I don't know why <laughs> Maybe it was a toxic stench of her breath what Or the, the dead look in her eyes <laughs> Or the unkent hairs dangling off her chin Who the fuck is that? No matter what the reason was My palms grew sweaty and my heart pounded Every time I passed her in the lunch line Wow I never felt quite at ease until I left the cafeteria and even then, I was still worried I would catch sight of her in the hallway between classes. One day, I got into a fight with another kid named Jeremy, and we both received detention. It was his fault, really. I had been passing him in the hall when he quickly stuck out his foot in front of mine and sent me sprawling to the ground. That son of a bitch. All my books flying through the air. Samantha, the girl I had a crush on, right. happened to be standing in the hallway when it happened. Mm -hmm. And she joined everyone else in laughing and pointing at me. That bitch. My rage got the best of me, and Jeremy and I were soon throwing punches at each other. After the teachers broke up our fist fight, we were sent to the principal's office. Long story short, I would be spending my Saturday at school filling out worksheets instead of playing video games with my friends. Saturday came, and my mother, rather unpleased to be up so early, Dropped me off outside the school doors at 8 in the morning. I walked in and found my way to room 126, where detention was always held. Jeremy was already there, sitting at a desk, along with two other kids. One of them was Nick, the dumb ape who was the quarterback of our football team. The other was a quiet girl in classes. I found myself a seat at a comfortable distance from everyone else. No one spoke a word. The only sound in the room was the deafening ticking of the clock. I quickly grew bored after a few minutes, so I spun around in my chair and faced Jeremy. Do you know who's running detention today? Kowalski, I think. Mrs. Kowalski? I repeated, hoping. Oh, but Jeremy didn't have to affirm it. Immediately, the all-too-familiar odour of a breath filled my nostrils, Ew. and the hair on the back of my neck stood straight up. I slowly turned around, and in walked the lunch lady, with a pile of worksheets under her arm. Now you turn to listen, Turks. she commanded Turks. in a thick accent. I really didn't want to be here today, and I don't want any trouble. I'm going to pass out these worksheets, and you all aren't going to make a peep, understand? Okay. We all nodded our heads. Right, right, right. Good. The first moment something goes wrong, one of you is going in the oven. What the fuck? Who? 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 Who the fuck says that? I like. I did not see that shit coming. I thought she was going to say if something goes wrong, one of you is. I don't know. Getting more detention days, or at the most, suspended or something. I don't fuck the oven. <laughs> That's not the lunch lady no more. She's somebody else that you do not want to fuck with. So I suggest y'all be y'all be cool. Y'all just be at ease. All right. Don't don't fuck <laughs> in the oven. <laughs> oh oh shit. Then she left heartedly and left us alone in the room. I shuddered as I tried to shake off the image of her hairy chin what? and her flabby arms. Ew. We all sat silently in the room for about 45 minutes, filling out our worksheets. The lunch lady still hadn't returned by that time, so we then took the risk of chatting quietly. Oh, damn. That lunch lady must be the ugliest living thing I've ever seen. She go here. Jeremy chuckled. She heard all of that. I bet she's so hairy, when you take off her pants, you can't tell whether she's a man or a woman. Nick replied, snorting. No one laughed. She hasn't even come back once to check on us, Jeremy continued. I bet she just went home as soon as she left the room. Come on, we 
We should see if we can sneak out. She's not home. He had just stood up from his desk when we all heard the sound of grinding metal and hissing steam coming from somewhere in the building. Everyone froze. I had easily recognized the sound. That came from the cafeteria, I said. Someone is starting up the ovens. Why the hell would someone turn on the ovens? Nick asked. Yes, Ryan. It must be Kowalski, Jeremy said. Fuck that detention. Maybe she's not hungry. Maybe she's getting the ovens ready so she can cook one of us up. That's not funny. And you'd be the first she'd throw in, I replied, playing along. But in reality, I was rather unnerved. Why would she start up the ovens right now? Surely she could have just packed a lunch. Maybe she actually enjoyed eating the greasy shrimp and cardboard pizza she always served for lunch. We tried to go back to our work, but at this point, it was impossible to try and concentrate again, even for the quiet girl. We finally decided that we should send one person outside the room to check if the coast was clear. Jeremy tore up one of the worksheets into four pieces and then wrote one of our names on each. Then, he shuffled the names in his hand and turned to Nick. Pick one. Nick took one of the pieces from Jeremy's hand and flipped it over. Ashley, he read. The quiet girl's face froze over with fear. Oh, come on, guys, don't make her do it, I said. Then you go, Jeremy replied. No way, I answered. It was your idea. You should go. Shut up already, you pussies, Nick interrupted. Stop talking. I'll go. He left the room and disappeared down the hall, and we all gathered at the doorway, waiting for him to return. A few silent minutes passed. The suspense grew unbearable. I was about to tell the others that we should go back in the room when... Nick reappeared at the end of the hallway. He glanced over his shoulder and motioned for us to come to him. I quietly shut the door and we all tiptoed down the hallway, looking all about us. We finally reached Nick. I circled this whole part of the building, he whispered to us. She's nowhere in sight. If we're quiet, I think we can make it to the front door without being noticed. Let's do it, said Jeremy. That's a bad idea. He took the lead, and the rest of us followed. We slowly made our way through the building, staying close to the walls and listening closely for approaching footsteps. The noise of the kitchen equipment was still traveling through the halls. We finally reached the front doors. Let's get out of here. Jeremy said. He pulled the door handle. The door wouldn't budge more than half an inch. He kept pulling on all the doors, but they were stuck. What the hell? It's chained, whispered Ashley. Let me try. Nick stepped up and grabbed the door handle, wrenching it back and forth furiously until the noise filled the hallway. Where's the last lady? You idiot! I cried through clenched teeth, dragging the oath away from the door. What do you think you're doing? We all paused in silence, listening to see if she was coming. Surely enough, after a few moments, we could faintly hear her footsteps coming down the hall. She was approaching swiftly. Run! I cried and we all took off in different directions. Nick and the quiet girl headed left, while Jeremy and I went right. As we turned around the corner, we could hear Ashley scream, and the lunch lady shout, I've got ya! We didn't even bother to look back. This way, Jeremy called to me. I followed him as he turned down a small hallway, and then came to a classroom. We can hide in here. We dashed inside the classroom and looked around frantically for hiding places. 
Jeremy dove under the teacher's desk while I took my chances behind the cabinet in the corner. Then, we waited in silence. For a few minutes, we didn't hear anything but the pounding of our own hearts. Still, we thought it best to wait it out a little longer. After a little while, we heard someone coming down the hallway. At first, we could only hear a faint mumbling, too quiet to distinguish. We froze. The voice drew closer. Jeremy? Adam? Guys, where are you? Jeremy? Jeremy got up from under the desk and opened the door. Nick, get in here! Nick hurried inside and Jeremy locked the door. Then we all crouched down behind the teacher's desk. Guys, you won't believe it, Nick whispered, catching his breath. I saw her get Ashley. She grabbed her by the arm and she tried to run, but then she hit her over the head with a wrench. Damn. I was dragging her body down the hallway and... Keep it down, I hissed. You said what? She knocked her out or killed her. I don't know, but she was dragging her body down the hallway towards the cafeteria. Oh my goodness. And the blood was all over the floor. Wow. And then I came to find you guys. He you know, he's scared to fuck You're out. saying Kowalski hit the girl over the head and then dragged her to the cafeteria? That's exactly what happened. I was lucky she didn't see me too. We need to get out of here, now. We need to get to a room with windows, I said. We can break out. Forget it, Jeremy interrupted. That fucking bullshit. I've seen guys try to break through glass like this. And, unless one of you guys has a sledgehammer, we're not going anywhere. There's only one other way out of this school. And that's through the back doors. That's next to the cafeteria, I said, completing Nick's sentence. It's the only chance we've got, said Jeremy. We can do it, if we're quiet. Then let's go, I replied. No time to lose. We opened the door and looked up and down the hallway. Follow me, whispered Jeremy. We crept down the hall, making our way toward the cafeteria. We were about halfway there and Mrs. Kowalski's voice came resounding through the building over the intercom. Hello there. Her accent was even more obvious, coming out of the speaker. I see you have left your room. That's unfortunate. However, I promise that there will be no consequences if you simply return to room 126. Fuck that detention. You, you, you messing with our life right now. Like, you know. No, I, I, oh my goodness. So, you mean, so, okay, if I was in y'all situation, y'all best believe I would have found some way out that fucking school. Every school, every school has some, has at least one exit to, 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 to leave from. Like, Oh my, whether it's a door or not, every school has at least one one place where they can exit the school with, with ease. Fuck man. So y'all telling me y'all can't, y'all just, y'all, bruh. I feel like y'all straight up bullshitting and y'all just having a good old time with this shit. Deep down inside, that's what I feel, I'm, that's, that's what I'm feeling like. Because... You best believe I would have found some way out that fucking school and then moved, like, got transferred to another school. That's all I'm saying. Yep. Ashley is waiting for you there. Ashley? We have to help her, Nick cried. Forget it. She's dead, said Jeremy. We need to get out of here. You didn't see what I saw, said Nick. 
This woman is insane. We have to save her. Nick bolted down the hallway. Nick, what are you doing? I shouted. I tried to run after him, but Jeremy held me back. No, Adam, let him go. We need to leave now. <sighs> what an idiot. I muttered as we dashed through the halls. Within a minute, we heard Nick give out a spine-tingling scream. I felt sick to my stomach. Hurry, shouted Jeremy. We're almost there. We blitzed through the halls. I grew nauseous and it was becoming hard to maintain my balance. The hallway started spinning in front of me. Come on, we're almost there. I pushed on, wanting to vomit with each step I took. Then we turned the corner, and there it was, the back entrance. We made it, cried Jeremy. Let's get out of here. No celebrate too soon. We were going so fast, we nearly ran right into the doors. I was about to hurl. Jeremy pulled on the door handles. Oh God, no, no. They were chained. We were trapped. My ass. I collapsed on the floor, exhausted. No, no, God no! Jerry screamed as he continued to yank back and forth on the door handles. Meanwhile, I laid on the cold floor, looking down the hallway. The cool linoleum felt good against my burning cheeks. My stomach was still churning. And then, out of the corner of my eye, I saw a pair of black boots no, you didn't. appear at the end of the hallway. No, you didn't. I looked up. She had arrived. Jeremy was now wildly throwing himself against the door. The lunch lady slowly approached, step by step, yielding a bloody wrench in her hand. It was too late. It was all over. I closed my eyes as the lunch lady passed over me and brought down a wrench upon Jeremy's head. He cried out in pain. She hit him again. His blood spewed all over the walls and ran down to the floor. She kept hitting him over and over again. I vomited. Then, everything went black. I opened my eyes. The brightness of the fluorescent lights made it hard to see at first. After minutes, my eyes adjusted, and I saw that I was in the middle of the cafeteria. I looked down. I was tied to a chair. I squirmed for a few seconds, but the rope was strong, and I could hardly move at all. Sighing, I gave up and examined my surroundings. No one else was in sight. The chairs and tables were set out in the usual fashion. I could hear the kitchen equipment still running in the back. I like care. Eh? The voice called out. I bent my head back and saw out of the corner of my eye that the lunch lady was preparing a meal in the open kitchen. Give me another minute. Lunch is almost ready. Ew, 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 ew. I squirmed around a little more, but the ropes were as tight as ever. I then sat still, patiently waiting. After a minute or two, the lunch lady came out. She was carrying a plate covered with a napkin. Did you have a nice nap? She asked me with that disgusting accent. I remained silent. She set the plate on a nearby table. You know, I could have killed you too, but out of the goodness of my heart, I decided to spare you. On top of that, I even cooked you a delicious meal. I remained silent. So what? I get no thank you? No. Nope. Is that how I'm treated for feeding you? Yup. Is this how I'm repaid for sweating away in a hot, dirty kitchen all day? Yup. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. She paused. You know, I've worked this job for 19 years. 
damn. And you turds are all the same. You come in line, you take your food, you walk away, and no thank you. You say, ew, she's smelly and weird. Forget that she cooks us delicious lunch. Well, that is over now. No more. I remained silent. The lunch lady came behind me and pushed my chair to the table, right where the plate sat. I did not want to see what was on the plate. She unbound my arms so that I could only move them from the elbow up. Then she set the fork on the table next to the plate. I have made you a delicious lunch. You will eat now. She pulled off the napkin and I gagged. I had to turn away. Sitting in the middle of the plate was an enormous sausage surrounded by cooked fingers, Ew. toes, Ew. eyes, Ew. And ears. Ew. You eat. You she commanded. Oh. No, no, I can't do it. <coughs> I was growing sick again. You eat or I hit, she said to me, holding up the wrench. I looked at the plate again and I nearly vomited. I, I can't do it. I can't do it. She brought the wrench right down upon my head. I screamed in agony. Eat, she commanded. I picked up the fork. My head pounding with pain, tears ran down my face as I cut off a bit of the sausage and stuffed it in my mouth. Pause. I chewed it up and swallowed it down. Good. Finish it all. Oh, you tripping. I shook my head, sobbing. She brought down the wrench in my head again. I cried out in pain. Eat! She shouted. I took another bite. And another, and another, blinded by my own tears. Whenever I paused, she would raise the wrench again, and I would keep eating. It took all my strength to keep it down in my stomach. When I finally had swallowed down the last bite, she took the plate. Very good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I don't want seconds. Now that you have had your lunch, I will have mine. I looked upward as she raised the wrench in the air one last time. And I closed my eyes. for you all how the fuck did she get that job she had had lied she had to have lied on her resume on her on her application and cuz if she was honest ain't no way in the world she would have got that job she had to lie like a motherfucker for and for for, for lunch lady to be acting like that, how the hell did she last 19 years? That whole school bullshitting. For real, that whole school, everybody getting it was bullshitting. I don't know, like, that's just... Like, I, you know, I have my fair share of um, lunch ladies in my past, right? And every single one of them were cool, as I can recall, but... I never had a lunch lady that was weird or that seemed off or that seemed abnormal or anything. I, I'm trying to think and I can't really think. But I'm not saying, you know, lunch ladies are all the same. You know, some of them are nice. Some of them are cool, real chill. Some of them are weird, creepy as fuck. Right? Some, some, some. You, 
Okay, so tell me this, because I know some of y'all are in school right now, and uh, sorry for my voice, I'm, you know, I'm getting over a cold, but if any of you all have these types of lunch ladies at your school, let me know. The lunch lady that fucks with everybody, that's cool with everybody, right? Or the lunch lady that's the connect when you need something, right? But that's, but you know, low key, that's low key about it. Or the lunch lady that's creepy as a motherfucker, right? Or the lunch lady that knows everything that goes on in the school, but doesn't say shit. That's real. That's like quiet. But you know that you that she knows that she knows just about everything that's going down in the school. If you all have any of those lunch ladies at your school. Please let me know that in the comment section below. Because I'm going to be like, hey, that's what's up. Um, or the lunch lady that's the top dog in the whole school. Like, 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 she is the, like she's the fucking boss. But she just plays, she just acts like a lunch lady. But low key, she's the top dog in the whole school. Let me know in the comment section below. But if y'all want me to, I, first, obviously they were all bullshit, right? But if y'all want me to react to more creepy pastas, let me know in the comment section below. And I've been told that um, creepy creepy pastas, um, Mr. Creepy Pasta videos are um, fake. I don't know. If they are, but I mean, nevertheless, it was a very entertaining video. But um, just let me know if y'all want me to react to it, to more of these videos from Mr. Keepy Pasta. But as always, keep it cool, keep it classy, and I love you. Stay happy, my family.